In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve five different TPN calculations questions and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa and if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations tips, tricks and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's get right to it. This question says a patient requires 30 millimole of phosphate and 80 milli equivalents of potassium in his PN. Potassium phosphate and potassium chloride will be used. How many milliliters of potassium phosphate and how many milliliters of potassium chloride are required? Potassium phosphate has 3 millimole phosphate and 4.4 milli equivalents potassium per milliliter and potassium chloride has 2 milli equivalents of potassium per milliliter. So let's do a quick analysis of what the question is asking. We need to find the volume in milliliters of potassium phosphate and the volume in milliliters of potassium chloride. So the first question that comes up is why do you have both potassium phosphate and potassium chloride? Now the answer to that is the potassium phosphate is what you're going to use to provide the patient with a 30 millimole of phosphate. And then the potassium chloride is what you're going to use to supply the difference in potassium that the patient needs to get to the 80 milli equivalents. So let's see exactly how that will look like. So the first thing that we want to do is determine the volume of potassium phosphate. And the way we will do that is to take the 3 millimole of phosphate per milliliter and set up a proportion to determine what volume will be needed to supply 30 millimole that the patient needs. So we now have a proportion we saw for the unknown which is x. So x equals 30 millimole times 1 milliliter divided by 3 millimole. The millimoles cancel out and we end up with 10 milliliters. So that would be the volume of potassium phosphate. So the next thing we need to do is find the volume of potassium chloride. Now to be able to do that we first need to determine how much potassium accompany the potassium phosphate when we use the potassium phosphate salt to supply the 30 millimole of phosphate to the patient. And so what that will look like is we will take the 4.4 milli equivalents per milliliter and set up a proportion to determine how many milli equivalents will be present in the 10 ml. We can now solve for the unknown here, which would be y. So y equals 4.4 milli equivalent times the 10 milliliters divided by 1 milliliter. The milliliters cancel out, and you end up with 44 milli equivalents. So you have 44 milli equivalents of potassium which accompanies the phosphate when you use that to supply the 30 millimole of phosphate. So we need to do a quick accounting. The patient actually needs 80 milli equivalents. We already gave the patient 44 milli equivalents of potassium when we supplied the 30 millimole of phosphate and that's because it's potassium phosphate, it has potassium and phosphate. And so when we subtract the 44 milli equivalents from the 80, we end up with 36 milli equivalents potassium. So we need to give the patient some volume of the potassium chloride to make up the 36 milli equivalents which is needed. And the way we do that is to take the 2 milli equivalents of potassium per milliliter, set up a proportion to determine how many milliliters will give us 36 milli equivalents. So here we solve for our unknown and the variable is going to be z. 
So Z equals 36 milli equivalent times one milliliter divided by two milli equivalents. And that gives us 18 milliliters. So we will need 18 milliliters of potassium chloride and 10 milliliters of potassium phosphate. Let's take a look at this question which says PN has 7 milliliters of potassium phosphate. Each milliliter contains 3 millimole of phosphate and 4.4 milli equivalents of potassium. Patient's daily potassium requirement is 42 milli equivalents. How many milliliters of potassium chloride with concentration 2 milli equivalents per milliliter should be added to the PN to meet the potassium requirement? So let's do a quick analysis of the question. In this particular question, we are required to find the volume of potassium chloride in milliliters that should be added to the parental nutrition. We know the patient's target for potassium, which is 42 milli equivalents, and we've been given information on how many milliliters of potassium phosphate was used originally in the PN, in the parental nutrition. So the reason that is significant is we're going to take the 7 milliliters of potassium phosphate and determine how much potassium accompanies the phosphate when you give that volume in the preparation. So what that will look like is we will take the 4.4 milli equivalents of potassium per milliliter, set up a proportion and determine how many milli equivalents will be present in 7 milliliters of potassium phosphate. So we go ahead and solve for the unknown, which is X. So X equals 4.4 milli equivalents times 7 milliliters divided by 1 milliliter. The milliliters cancel out and you end up with 30.8 milli equivalents of potassium. So that's how much potassium accompanies the phosphate when you give 7 milliliters of potassium phosphate. So the next step is to do a quick accounting of the potassium. We want to give the patient 42 milli equivalents of potassium. We already gave 7 milliliters of potassium phosphate and the original idea there was to use the potassium phosphate to fulfill the patient's phosphate requirements. But by doing that, we also gave some potassium. So when you give 7 milliliters of potassium phosphate, you also inadvertently would be giving the patient 30.8 milli equivalents of potassium. So we want to subtract that from the 42. And that should give us 11.2 milli equivalents. So now we're going to use the potassium chloride to supply the additional 11.2 milli equivalents. And the way that will work is we'll take the two milli equivalents per milliliter and set up a proportion to find out how many milliliters will give us 11.2 milli equivalents. So we can now solve for our unknown here, which will be y. So y equals 11.2 milli equivalents times 1 milliliter divided by 2 milli equivalents. The milli equivalents cancel out and you end up with 5.6 milliliters. This question says JT, a 63 year old male, is receiving 1150 milliliters of D30W, 860 milliliters of aminosin, 8.5%, and 340 milliliters of intralipid, 10% in his PN therapy. What percentage of the non protein calories are represented by dextrose? Round answer to the nearest whole number. Do not include units. So the first thing we want to do is to be clear on the sources of non-protein calories in the question. So one of them will be the dextrose and the other will be the intralipid. 
So the goal will be to determine the calories you're getting from dextrose and the calories you're getting from intralipid and then you could go ahead and later find the percentage represented by dextrose. So let's start off by determining the calories from dextrose. So the D30W implies dextrose 30%. And the 30% is a percentage concentration. And what that will mean is you have 30 grams of dextrose in 100 milliliter preparation. Now we need to end up with calories. So we need to use the conversion factor. So for dextrose, which is basically a carbohydrate, the factor is 3.4 kilocals per gram. So we can go ahead and use dimensional analysis and multiply that ratio by 3.4 kilocals per gram. So the grams cancel out and you're now in kilocals per milliliter. And so we're going to make use of the volume of the D30W. So we multiply by 1150 milliliters. So now the milliliters cancel out and we end up with 1173 kilocalories. And so now the next step is to determine the calories from the intralipid. And here we want to make use of the conversion factor for the lipids, 10%. It's 1.1 kilocal per milliliter and so to determine the calories we multiply this by the volume of the intralipid 10 percent which is 340 milliliters the milliliters cancel out and you end up with 374 kilocalories so the next thing we can do is determine the total calories from the non-protein sources so total calories is going to be equal to 1173 kilocals plus the 374 kilocals and that should be equal to 1547 kilocalories and so now the percentage represented by dextrose is going to be equal to the calories contributed by dextrose which would be 1173 kilocals divided by the total calories which is 1547 and then we multiply that by 100 percent and that should be equal to 75.8 However, the question says round answer to the nearest whole number, do not include units, and so the answer is 76. This question says SF is a 28 year old female, 164 pounds, in the ICU after a cycling accident. She is going to be started on PM today. The prescriber has ordered 35 kilocals per kilogram per day to be provided as a two-in-one PN solution with standard electrolytes. The pharmacist has several bags of two-in-one PN with standard electrolytes that were ordered for a different patient whose PN was actually discontinued yesterday. The PN bags are labeled D40% weight by volume and amino acid 14% weight by volume. How many milliliters of this PN will be required to provide the daily caloric intake ordered for SF. Round answer to the nearest whole number, do not include units. So the first thing we want to do is determine the calories that the patient actually needs. And to do that, we'll make use of the 35 kilocals per kilogram per day and we'll multiply this by the weight of the patient. So 
164 pounds but the dimensions are not consistent and so we need to convert the pounds to kilograms now 2.2 pounds makes one kilogram so the pounds cancel out the kilograms cancel out and you end up with 2609.1 kilocal per day so that's the target calories and we are going to supply that using the d40 percent and then the amino acid 14 percent so the next thing is to determine the calories from the dextrose and the way we will do that is to take the d40 percent which means you have 40 grams of dextrose in 100 milliliters but we need calories so we need to make use of the conversion factor for carbohydrates because dextrose is a carbohydrate so we can multiply this by 3.4 kilocals per gram so the grams cancel out and you end up with 1.36 kilocal per milliliter so we do a similar thing for the amino acids so calories from amino acids we take the 14 percent which is 14 grams in a hundred milliliters we multiply that by the conversion factor for proteins it is four kilocalories per gram the grams cancel out and you end up with 0 0.56 kilocals per milliliter so what we can do next is we can add the contributions in calories from dextrose and amino acids together and that would imply you have 1.36 kilocals per milliliter plus 0 0.56 kilocals per milliliter that gives a total of 1.92 kilocalories per milliliter so the next thing we can do is set up some sort of an equation to determine the volume that is actually needed and the way we do that is to take the total in kilocalories per milliliter which would be 1.92 kilocalories per ml if we multiply this by some volume let's call that y milliliters that should be equal to the 2609.1 kilocals per day so we can now go ahead and solve for our unknown which would be y which implies y equals 2609.1 kilocals per day divided by 1.92 kilocalories per milliliter and we end up with 1358.9 milliliters per day. However, notice that the question says round answer to the nearest whole number, do not include units. So that will be equal to 1359. This question says PN. A 61 year old female is receiving 1050 milliliters of D50W, 520 milliliters of aminosin 15%, and 550 milliliters of intralipid 10% in his PN therapy. What percentage of calories is provided by the protein content? Round to the nearest tenth. So the strategy here will be to determine the calories from the dextrose, aminosin, and intralipid, find the total, and then express the calories from the aminosin as a percentage of the total. And so what that will look like is we'll start off with calories from the dextrose. And we have D50W. So the D50W implies dextrose 50% and that means you have 50 grams of dextrose in 100 milliliters. 
Now we need calories, so we need to multiply this ratio by the conversion factor for carbohydrates because dextrose is a carbohydrate and the conversion factor is 3.4 kilocals per gram. And so the grams cancel out and now we are in kilocals per milliliter and so we can multiply by the volume of the D50W which is 1050 milliliters and so now the milliliters cancel out and you are left with units of kilocalories and so the calories from dextrose should be equal to 1785 kilocalories so we proceed and do a similar thing for the aminosin so let's say calories from aminosin and that's the source of your protein is a 15% solution which implies you have 15 grams in 100 milliliters we need this in kilocals so we make use of the conversion factor for proteins which is 4 kilocals per gram the grams cancel out and then we can multiply by the volume of the aminosin. So we multiply this by 520 milliliters. The milliliters cancel out. And we end up with 312 kilocalories. And so the next step is to determine the calories from the intralipid. And it's a 10% solution. So the conversion factor for that is 1.1 kilocals per milliliter. We multiply this conversion factor by the volume of the intralipid, which is 550 milliliters. The milliliters cancel out. And you end up with 605 kilocalories. So now we can proceed and find the total calories and that will be equal to 1785 plus 312 plus 605 and that is equal to 2702 kilocalories and so the percentage provided by the protein content is going to be equal to the calories from the protein which is 312 kilocalories divided by the total calories which is 2702 kilocals times 100% and that is equal to 11.5%. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you would like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.